Hey everybody, this is Lewis Lewis Speaks 2019 and I want to talk to you today about the gay community. Um, initially, I came to the community looking for daddy. I came looking for a man who will take care of me, a man who will love me and treat me the way that I know that I deserve to be treated. But instead, what I found was just a bunch of boys masquerading as men basically hurting each other, trying to reenact what they feel a man is. You know, these toxic definitions of masculinity that they have are just astounding, you know? Half of the men, they either are acting the way that they feel other men have acted in their lives, or they don't even want to be men. Half of them are just a bunch of bitches who have poor identity issues, you know? Um, half of these bitches just want to be satellite dishes. They don't even have an identity. They don't even know what they want. And I'm noticing I came to this community looking for love and looking to be repaired and looking to repair myself by trying to find another man who will love me. My father, he was non-existent. He left when I was three, made guest appearances in and out of my life until the age of 10. And Occasionally, he will resurface during some critical period in my life when I was learning how to tie my shoe or when I was learning how to ride a bike. He was always there just asking my mother for money or just asking me for forgiveness or some kind of uh, faulty apology he would offer. And it was traumatic. You know, here I was young, wanting to love this man. And he just was not ready to receive my love. He was also traumatized. Um, he sustained numerous traumas in his life from molestation to abuse. And so I can only imagine what it was like for him. But the thing about trauma is that it is hereditary and it is contagious. And so he passed that trauma on down to me by him not being present in my life. And it really hurt me. You know, it really hurt me because I wanted to love this man. And so I went out there looking for the love of my father and other men. And all I got in return is nothing but a bunch of broken men who just break everything around them. They're like bulls in china shops. And it was hard. You know, here I was looking and taking my broken pieces, trying to find someone who will help me glue them back together. And what ended up happening was I ended up getting cut and bruised and lacerated on the broken pieces of these men. And it keeps on happening. It keeps on happening. Even now, and it keeps on happening. You know, you got men out there that don't want to put a picture up on Grinder. 40, 50 years old, still closeted. You know, these men giving you false pictures. Pictures of their dicks, their asses, nothing real. They don't want anything real. You meet a guy, you think at a coffee house. You think that it's, it's, it's safe. It's not. Because that boy still carries a legacy of trauma that probably his father left him. So he's basically just cutting you and acting acting out, you know. Um, and also, you know, they say that, well, if you're looking for love, you should not look in the bar. And I agree. I agree. Because the bar scene is one where it encourages people to put on facades. Got it. So you meet these boys at other locations, in the streets, McDonald's, bookstores. But the thing I've noticed is that you could take the boy at the bar, but you can't take the bar at the boy. The bar is still locked in his persona. So he's out here trying to give you a representative, a false image to try to protect his ego. And it's just so annoying. It's so annoying when you're trying to look for genuine love out here and you're finding nothing but games and broken men. And I know it's no better in the heterosexual world, but I'm not talking about the heterosexual world. I'm talking about gay men. Gay men need to really get it together. Because as I stand right now, I'm going to be single for life. I am going to be single for life. Because if this junk, if this out here, if this is all there is, I'm out the game. I am out the game. Because I can't. I can't be bothered with men who want to continue to play games. You know? You got men out there, they offer to be your sugar daddy just to use and disease you. 
You know, I don't know how many men I know out here that fell for some man's lie and now they're sitting there HIV positive. They got a host and a history of STDs that they're living with and managing, you know, all because they fell for some man's lie. Out here looking for love and all they get in return is disease. And I see so many of my fellow gay men out there being just swallowed every single day. Every day. And it's just disgusting. You know, this life, it presents itself as a, an illusion. In the beginning, it's all fun times. Fun times, the men want you, they desire you, there's attraction, there's seduction. And it's just overwhelming and it makes you feel powerful it makes you feel wanted it makes you feel everything and then and then that's when the bullshit comes that's when these niggas come and they basically just show their true colors and unveil the mask see behind the veil behind the veil the truth about the gay community and the lifestyle is that it's one that is very traumatized and it's very broken and it's wounded and what you get from such ingredients is nothing but brokenness, hurt, pain, agony. It's outlived its usefulness. It's outlived its usefulness, especially when you are doing the healing work and you keep on running into broken people and you start to notice certain patterns and you start to see the unconscious. You know, your level of awareness can't, can't continue on. There comes a point where you have to grow up and these boys suffer from arrested development. They got eternal Peter Pan syndrome. They want to be locked in this eternal adolescence of body and physique and good looks and good times and the next club, the next bar, the next excitement, the next dick, the next ass, the next sexual... It's just... It's too much. So, where does that leave me now? That leaves me single. And I say single with a purpose, self-partnered, which is the new term for 2020. It also leaves me revolutionary. Revolutionary singleness. That's what I'm gonna call it, revolutionary singleness. Because like I said, I'm going on strike. I can't continue to go out there and be a fool and I, I can't with these men. There comes a point in your life where you have to wake up and you have to say to yourself, enough is enough. When is enough enough? Tell me, when is enough enough? You have to answer that question for yourself. But as for me, enough is enough. So. This is Lewis Speaks saying, I bid everybody a wonderful day and a happy life. Peace.